T.S. Eliot is remembered by scholars and students of literature for his rendering of the modern human psyche in innovative and challenging poetic forms. He assimilated French symbolists, Greek and Roman mythology, Renaissance dramatists, and 20th century anxiety to create poetry that was both of the present and of the past. With his introduction to fellow poet and his future patron Ezra Pound in September 1914, Eliot entered the modernist literary arena. At Pound's behest, Eliot's first major poem was published, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. The poem is a visit into the indecisive mind of a bourgeois gentleman as he questions whether or not to reveal his romantic feelings to a woman. Do I dare disturb the universe? In a minute there is time for decisions and revisions which a minute will reverse. Proofrock was again published in 1917 as the booklet Proofrock and Other Observations, with the addition of other poems such as Portrait of a Lady, Preludes, and Rhapsody on a Windy Night. Like Proofrock, these other poems explore the paralyzed minds of middle-class men and women who fail to develop meaningful relationships. After the success of Proofrock, Eliot's second collection, entitled Poems, was released in 1920. In true Eliot fashion, these poems are highly elusive, several are written in French, and most use sophisticated diction. One poem begins with the word polyphil progenitive, meaning extremely prolific. Poems also introduced a recurring character, the philanderer Sweeney, who later appears in The Wasteland and Sweeney Agonistes. In between writing poetry, Eliot was building his reputation as a prolific literary critic. In 1920, Eliot released The Sacred Wood, an essay compilation that included two of his most famous essays, Tradition and the Individual Talent and Hamlet and His Problems, along with commentary on Restoration Drama, Dante, and Victorian poetry. In Tradition and the Individual Talent, Eliot acknowledges the omnipresence and influence of the great poets of history on contemporary art. He gives the moniker of the tradition to the bibliography of immortal writers stretching back to Homer. In Hamlet and His Problems, Eliot reintroduced the term objective correlative, the invocation of a specific emotion in a reader through deliberately chosen imagery or narrative. Both the literary tradition and the objective correlative would be used by Eliot to great effect in his next and most lauded poem, The Wasteland. The Wasteland is the consummation of Eliot's major themes, form, and images in a modern epic poem. The piece can be seen as an elegy for the vivacious pagan world amid the rise of a mechanical modern society. Presented in a series of fragments, The Wasteland connects infertile and zombified personas not through traditional poetic conventions, but by building a web of images that unify its individual pieces with a common theme. Eliot followed The Wasteland in 1925 with The Hollow Men, a poem that also explores similar ideas about infertility. The Hollow Men of the title could be imagined as inhabitants of the wasteland. They are characters who are, like Prufrock, metaphorically stuffed with straw unable to act, and doomed to fade out of existence with a whimper. This preoccupation with 20th century infertility, however, was substituted soon after 1927 for contrite religious verse, when Eliot was baptized in the Church of England. Ash Wednesday, published in 1930, can be seen as a meditation on the possibility of redemption. It reads, And pray to God to have mercy upon us and I pray that I may forget these matters that with myself I too much discuss, too much explain." There is obvious Christian influence in Ash Wednesday's language, and its title is taken from the beginning of Lent in the Christian calendar, significantly a period of fasting and prayer. Some of Eliot's most popular work continues in the same vein, such as The Journey of the Magi, a monologue given by one of the three wise men recalling the journey to Bethlehem, and murder in the cathedral, 
a verse drama reenacting the martyrdom of Thomas Becket. Eliot's last major poetic work, Four Quartets, is a set of four poems which he considered to be his finest. Like Ash Wednesday, it explores the themes of time and mankind's redemption through the motifs of past, present, and future. The first section, Burnt Norton, begins, Time present and time past are both perhaps present in time future, and time future contained in time past. If all time is eternally present, all time is unredeemable. It is a poem concerned with both the immutability of the past and the possibilities of the future. In Eliot's future, he went on to write several plays for Broadway, such as The Family Reunion and The Cocktail Party, which received warm reviews. He was later awarded the Order of Merit and the Nobel Prize in Literature for his contributions to English verse. Although Eliot's poems were relatively few, they enjoyed great literary recognition and longevity. In looking from the hopeless, timid proofrock, to the redemptive poems The Wasteland and Four Quartets, to his plays exploring filial tension, Eliot revealed the spiritual barrenness of 20th century man and his quest for salvation. This unending search for life in a lifeless world haunts Eliot's long and diverse literary career, and may remind us of some of his final words in Four Quartets. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time.